Uh, today we're talking with Professor Ziska Fields. Professor Fields is an expert in creativity. She's also alumni of the university and also a PhD alumni of the business school. And we're going to talk about creativity. Can, you, can it be learned or is it something that's born? So, so Professor, first thing, very welcome. And I would just like to ask you uh, on, on the first question is, we so many times hear that you are born with creativity. Is this the, the alpha and the omega or can you actually learn creativity as well? Thank you, Professor Bishop, for that introduction and also the good question. Actually, the answer to your question, there's two answers. The first answer is yes, all of us are born with creativity. That is our superpower, which I would say God has given all of us. And that is also the reason why we developed as a species, because we use our imagination, we use our curiosity and our creativity to actually develop things. And that is why we also develop all these technologies that uh, make our lives easier. So yes, we are born with it. Unfortunately, and that's the downfall, as you grow older and go through the schooling system, you actually lose your creativity. Not totally, but for example, when kindergarten children were tested, there were about 1,500 of them. 98% of them were creative and they had a geniusness in terms of their creativity. But as they tested the same students over a period of 10, 12 years, they actually lost their creativity. And when we look at adults, we can say that only like 5% of adults or their capacity is actually creative. And that is because the schooling system actually forces us into little blocks. They focus on our intelligence more than all the other capacities that we have. And as we know, our education system needs an overhaul. But yes, creativity can also be taught. And why creativity can be taught is it, it is a cognitive skill that you can develop. There's certain processes that you can follow. So stop step one, step two, step three. So you can use that process. It also um, helps you in terms of problem solving. There's different models, tools, techniques that people can learn and can apply. So in terms of innovation, even in business, um, like if you think about you want to enhance your service delivery, a lot of that goes into problem solving and creativity. And what we need to do is to actually take our creativity now and turn it into innovation so that it can add value. Creativity must not just stop with creativity. And that is where the learning continues. So I hope I answered that question. Yes, it's very interesting. I, I want to ask you, so, so this is something for the youth. We must start earlier. Uh, you would have a bit of a problem teaching me creativity, <laughs> but you should have taught me many years ago. So is this a youth thing that as soon as possible in, in a child's I, life, which we should try and stimulate this? I think, yes, even... Um, you know, when they start developing, when they start crawling and talking, they are discovering and their whole mind is so open to new experiences. And that is why we say they are more creative because they are so open to make connections and to learn. And I would say the schooling system should actually start from grade one, but you should actually start before that. Even as a parent, you should start and think about how can you enhance the creativity of your child. In your view, what what are the important factor or factors that we, we should consider in, in uh, initiating more creative uh, education? And if so, um, in, in specifically in South Africa, where we have also people from all over Africa that joins our economy and, and study over here, <laughs> or they, they um, work here and they go back and they can take what they've learned back to the African countries. Uh, these cultural differences, is it possible to, to, to merge them and to get some factors that we can initiate or, or, or awaken some creativity amongst our, our young people? We have Africans in Africa, which is very creative. Um, I don't want to actually highlight a specific group of people, but those people are very creative in terms of what they had to develop and how they had to make a living. So they tap into their creativity to actually make money. Mm -hmm. And they don't 
really realize that they are using their creativity. They just see, well, it's something that I saw or did or think I need to do. And they link it to entrepreneurship more than entrepreneurship actually starts with your creativity. And that creativity turns into something that you want to sell to other people. So I would say Africa is very unique in terms of the ability to be creative and in terms of our cultures. And we can actually learn a lot from every different culture that we have. Creativity is not only for one culture, for two cultures, or for somebody who actually um, ignites it in their people. But it is something that is, that is like, I would say, almost cosmic, almost like a geniusness. And that is why it's so important that we should focus on Africa and say that we need to build Africa. Africa's got an Africa creativity, African innovation. A mentality that we haven't tapped in. But if we look at the examples of African people coming up with wonderful ideas and actually come up with these innovations, we actually realize that our cognitive skill in terms of that is actually very unique. So my answer is yes, we need to tap into different cultures. We can highlight the cultures who is not so supportive of creativity, but then again, if we, if we give it another name maybe instead of this Airy fairy concept, we can link it to entrepreneurship. It will make more sense to them than to say um, develop more creativity, rather develop more entrepreneurial thinking. And people will actually support that more. There's also a concept of cultural hacking where we can actually tap into different cultures and actually identify what are they using in their culture to make them stand out, to make them unique in a specific area. So if we can, maybe, and this is the area for much research, I think, that we can actually tap into different cultures in Africa and see what we can learn from one another and actually develop the entrepreneurial mindset linked to creativity, our imagination, and so forth. So, yes, uh, cultures is very important. It plays a role. So we need to know, especially parents, they need to know if they are in a culture that actually supports creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, or not. If they're not, then they need to find a way, we need to find a way to actually explain to them the importance of that and what they can actually do to enhance the creativity in their children. But we shouldn't just leave it and say that it's just a cultural thing because creativity is something that all of us have. Some lesser than others, but we need to practice creativity. Otherwise it goes away because it's like you you can ride a bicycle, yes, and when you ride it often, you can do all sorts of tricks, but if you are getting older and you haven't been on a bicycle for a while, you know, you still need to try and balance yourself otherwise, you know, and you cannot do the tricks that you did like 50 years ago. So creativity is the same. It must be practiced and it must be stimulated and we must be talking about it. So I hope I answered all the things. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Um, you see, that, that is why I haven't given in to the urge to buy myself a big bike again. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm on the same skill levels when I last got off 30 years ago. <laughs> or like uh, me and horse riding as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Young, but well, now I don't know so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Prof, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks a lot. Really, it's been, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Maybe, maybe later in the year we can, we can follow this up with a more focused uh, approach but i'm so glad you touched on on creativity and entrepreneurship i mean that that is where we can make a real difference in africa um, and to, to to help our people to develop so thank you very much for your for your brief insight and uh, thanks very much thank you it's a pleasure and thank you for inviting me as well yeah.